Hi there, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, yes, I did mention uh, about a month ago that it was probably going to be two or three months before I was going to have another new release reviews video, but uh, it so happens that uh, a few new releases have come along since then that uh, were not on my radar at the time, obviously. So that is what I will be presenting today, is three new or recent releases that I'll be reviewing today. First one is the sophomore album by synth group Years and Years, called Palo Santo. Uh, now, when I first came across uh, Years and Years back uh, shortly after their first album came out, it was like two months or so after it came out that I uh, it caught my attention I listened to it. They first struck me as, at least back then, uh, the heirs apparent to Savage Garden, the Australian synth pop uh, group, even to the degree that uh, Ollie Alexander, the vocalist for Years and Years, bears a striking vocal resemblance, in my opinion, to Darren Hayes, the vocalist for Savage Garden. But on this album, they really broaden their sound. Uh, from the very beginning, they've got this the exotic percussion in uh, the first track, uh, Sanctify. and uh, But they do continue, at least in a, uh, in a way, they continue the theme of spiritual motifs. It went through their first album, but not quite as much. I mean, the first album was called Communion. So it was it's kind of there from the start, but uh, a little bit more in this album. Not off-puttingly so. I mean, I do not like religious uh, music. It's It's basically lost on me. But uh, but yeah, I mean you know the the song titles alone, sanctify, hallelujah, uh, karma, which I guess is kind of semi spiritual. Preacher is another song, so uh, it almost scared me off of this album though because uh, the early pre release press suggested it was uh, approaching uh, territory of a concept album, which I've never cared much for concept albums. At least the the phrase concept album kind of scares me off, and I may get into that later on as to why. But uh, honestly, if I hadn't read that, I never would have guessed that there, any, there was any kind of attempt at a unifying theme through the album, really. The songs vary quite a bit. They, they, they keep your interest, at least definitely kept mine. Uh, some of my favorite songs on here are uh, the, the two singles, All For You and the title track, Palo Santo as well as Karma and Hypnotized. Uh, those are both uh, really, really good tracks. Um, again, they it's definitely years and years, but it's a little bit more of an evolved sound, which, uh, which I always look for in a sophomore album. Uh, I have very mixed feelings, though, about the song If You're Over Me. It's, it's very poppy, which in itself I don't mind. I mean, hey, I like poppy, catchy, pokey songs, but this one just sounds out of place when it's put with the rest of the album. So... Uh, it might have done well on another album, possibly on their first, uh, but it just, yeah, this the, the pop sound of it, uh, the overly pop sound of it, as compared to the rest of the album, kind of makes it uh, stick out like a sore thumb. So, But uh, it's a very small quibble. I, I really enjoy this album, and I've, I would give it probably a 80 to 85. But yeah, I am very happy I picked this one up. Uh, it's uh, got a, a nice varied sound, as I said. Um, very worthy successor to their first album, Communion. Now the second album I'll be talking about today is uh, the actually the third one that I was compelled to pick up after listening to the soundtrack from the movie Love, Simon. Uh, the first of those was Bleacher's Strange Desire, which I really enjoyed. I absolutely loved that one. And the second was the 1975 sophomore album, I Like It When You Sleep. I, I really enjoyed that one as well. In fact, that made me buy their first album, which I also loved. This one is uh, the debut album by Australian pop singer Amy Shark. It's called Love Monster. Now, for some reason, I was totally prepared for this album to not sound like her contribution to the Love, Simon soundtrack, Sink In. I just was prepared for something more broad, and, and it was actually even before I listened to any of the singles off of this. And I have ended up, I've really enjoyed listening to this album. I, I, real, I really do like it. Uh, she actually reminds me in places of Alanis Morissette, which I kind of didn't expect. Uh, it's particularly on the tracks The Idiot, and also Never Coming Back, which is one that unexpectedly grew on me. It, it, was, it sounded very average at first, but I really started enjoying that one. Now, there's one song on here that I have mixed feelings about, uh, similar to the one song on Years and Years album, and uh, that song is I Said Hi. Now, there's a trend amongst female vocalists that I've noticed over the last several years that, uh, and, you know, one vocalist started doing it, and then before I knew it, a whole flock of them were do was doing it. Um, it's where they uh, distort the vowels in the words that they sing. Uh, like, for instance, on this song, um, 
she sings laying on my side watching time fly by you know and I mean she's not New York she's not a New Yorker she's Australian so uh, you know it's just that just you know laying on that eye uh, kind of gets on my nerves I mean she doesn't do it thankfully to a degree that's annoying so I can forgive her for that uh, but yeah I've, I've had enough I, c I can't name any of the vocalists that do that because as soon as I hear it I forget I'd listen to him and go on to somebody else uh, but yeah she so she kind of saved herself by uh, suppressing that but the other thing about this song that I don't really care for is after the first verse you know there's like two verses then the chorus and then she repeats the first verse and that always irks me a little bit it, it smacks of laziness to me you know it's like couldn't she have written another verse you know vary the song a little bit so uh, yeah that song is uh I could do without well, that one. I, I don't skip over it when I listen to the album, but still. Um, but yeah, I do have several favorite tracks on here. Uh, Middle of the Night, that's got, that's got a great distorted guitar sound in it. And also the lyrics for Don't Turn Around are just, they're kind of heartbreakingly beautiful. Uh, so, so yeah, this is an, another very good album. I really enjoy it. Um, I'm going to score this one 70 to 75. Yeah, 75. I hesitate to say 75 to 80, so I'll say 75. Uh, yeah, very good album. I'm glad I picked it up. Now, the final album I'll be talking about today is the latest release by Gorillaz, The Now Now. Uh, I've never listened to a Gorillaz album before, this is my, so this is my first exposure to them, really. Uh, but what caught me, what really tipped the scales for me, was the fact that they uh, brought George Benson in for the album uh, for their lead-off lead single, Humility. I've been a George Benson fan, a casual George Benson fan, for 30 years ever since his great big 80s single, Give Me the Night, uh, which is one of the very few vocal singles he's had. But then uh, ever since I inherited my sister's CD collection, I've become more and more of a fan of his music over the last few years. So it was awesome to see a contemporary act like Gorillaz bring in a legendary jazz guitarist like George Benson. Uh, the, his guitar is kind of buried in the mix a little bit, but you can still hear it. It's still got that, that unmistakable George Benson flair on it. Uh, and I am presuming that this album is, uh, from what I've read about online and from the little other stuff that I've listened of theirs, uh, this is much more of a laid-back, chill funk sound than their other albums, which I mean, suits me just fine. So, uh, I mean, I can't knock it in that way because I don't have any other album of theirs to compare it to. So, uh, yeah, this gets high marks from me. Um, it reminds me, some of their singles, some of the songs on here remind me of... Uh, some of the softer 80s synth pop like uh, Yaz or Bronsky Beat or Depeche Mode maybe. One thing I'm not crazy about is uh, how Damon Albarn puts a lot of vocal processing on his voice. You know, I, I would much rather hear, you know, it, it's like it's like he recorded it and then played it back through a speaker and recorded it again. You know, that kind of thing. I mean, I would much rather hear, you know, unfiltered, his unfiltered voice. I, I think it would, I think it would go well with this stuff. Um, but yeah, that's really my only quibble about Gorillaz. But uh, yeah, plenty of favorite songs on here. Humility is one of my favorite tracks. Uh, Lake Zurich, that's uh, an almost totally instrumental song. It's got some of that great, it's just bathed in synth. It's, it's, it reminds me of the New Age phase I went through uh, back in the, uh, I guess it was the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. Just very, very synthy instrumental stuff, kind of upbeat. Uh, I like the interesting time signature on Sorcerers. That's a really good song. And also uh, the final track, Sukai, that's, that's got kind of a folky sort of a vibe to it. That's it, just kind of a, an interesting twist uh, in the album. But yeah, lots of varied sounds in here. Uh, I'm enjoying this album a little bit more every time I listen to it. And I yeah, I've got to give this probably a 70 to 75. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm definitely keeping this one and the other two for... Uh, for the foreseeable future, absolutely. Um, so, uh, yeah, great trio of albums. Uh, what did you think of these albums? Let me know in the comments. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't yet. I'd love to have, uh, I'd love to see that subscriber count inch up a little bit more. Uh, and again, thank you very, very much for watching. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.